Hello and welcome to Ottawa Business Journal's continuing coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Michael Curran, the publisher of the Ottawa Business Journal. Today, we're talking to an Ottawa-based entrepreneur who has been thrust into the national spotlight thanks to his company's innovative DNA testing product. This company, Spartan Biosense, is mentioned almost daily in the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's updates, and he's making headlines around the world. But long before his company gained such prominence, he was a U of Ottawa medical school graduate, a 40 under 40 back in 2015, and an active member of a local group called Fresh Founders. And just to point this out, he did don the cover of Ottawa Business Journal in February, long before all this started. Please welcome the CEO of Spartan Bioscience, Dr. Paul Lem. Hello, Paul. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having me on your show. Oh, wow. It's, uh, it must be an absolute whirlwind for you. Uh, tell us about how you're feeling a little bit these days. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So I think it was Prime Minister Trudeau mentioned that the government was signing a letter of intent with us on March 20th. I think by March 25th, we had a humongous contract with the federal government. By March 31st, they gave us a down payment of a huge amount. And then we just started ramping and signing up all sorts of provincial customers. So the last three weeks had been inside the tornado. Uh, yeah. and I've read books about what this is like. I've talked to other people like Toby Luke of Shopify. Now we're experiencing it at Spartan. Yeah, There's, there were some uh, prognostications. Uh, uh, Harley, you mentioned uh, uh, from Shopify, uh, said that it was going to be a giant year for Spartan Bioscience. Of course, he mm -hmm. said that months ago. Holy cow, no one's ever been uh, more bang on with a, with a prediction on that. So congratulations. How is your team adjusting to this? So, you know, you go from being a significant local Ottawa startup, uh, if that in fact is the right word for a, a 14, 15 year old company, um, to just kind of this explosive growth. How's the team handling this? I think one of the advantages we've had on our team is we have a bunch of veterans who have been planning for a large scale up for many years and who also have a background of scaling up medical devices. So we were relatively prepared in that we knew what we had to do. I think nothing could have prepared us though for it's literally like hour to hour things are changing and we're fighting all these fires while still trying to keep an eye on the big picture. Yeah. Um, I want to dig into your backstory uh, a bit, Paul. Uh, you're, you, you and your company have become almost a household name, certainly in, in Ottawa and beyond. But in fact, this started a long time ago, right back at when you were a med school student and graduated from U Ottawa, so local roots right there. Tell me about those early days of, of Spartan Bioscience and, and what, what they looked like. My background, as you mentioned, is a medical doctor, and my specialty was infectious disease microbiology. So part of my training was to actually run one of these big labs, these central labs with mainframe DNA analyzers. And back in the day, I always thought that one day these mainframe DNA analyzers would come out of the lab where everyone would have personal DNA analyzers. Because we've already seen this trend on the tech side, goes from mainframe computers, personal computers to smartphones. And then even on medical devices, used to be you had to do blood glucose testing by sending your blood off to a lab. But now, of course, you just have your own personal blood glucose meter and you do it yourself. So we always thought this trend would one day come to DNA analyzers. I just didn't realize it was going to take 14 years. Yeah, no kidding. And you started off, uh, if I remember, doing Legionella, Legionella bacteria. So you thought that was maybe the first significant commercial application for your cube testing kit. Is, is that right? That's right. So over these 14 years, we've always thought that it made sense on a conceptual level that people would want instant results. Because if you kind of think of a smartphone, it gives you instant access to information. Well, DNA is Mother Nature's original information technology. So we thought it makes sense. People are going to want this. But then it was a question of, okay, what is going to be the killer app? Like, what will people actually want instant DNA results for? So you're mentioning Legionella. So that's a bacteria that contaminates water systems of buildings can cause a severe pneumonia and can kill people in the building. So over the years, these sorts of applications have been surfacing from around the world and we've been developing these niche products. Okay, and uh, let's zoom forward a little bit. When was it that you determined, uh, likely in 2020, that, that your cube testing DNA product could be used uh, for COVID-19? As an infectious disease doctor, so I and my colleagues have always thought for years that one day there would be a global pandemic. If you look at the history of humanity, every 50 to 100 years, there is one of these pandemics. The last one was the Spanish flu of 1918. So we were overdue for something like COVID-19. 
And so we had been monitoring it around the world, seeing the pandemic. And then the CDC published a validated test on over 2,000 clinical samples for COVID-19. And then we decided, okay, let's port the CDC's test onto our device. And that was the genesis of our COVID-19 product. And, and was your device that flexible, the cube testing product, uh, Paul, was it that flexible that it could be used quite quickly to determine other sorts of uh, viruses and bacteria? Yeah, so it comes back to our strategy over 14 years. We've always had this North Star that one day people would have these personal DNA analyzers. And s- similar to, let's say, an iPhone where you have the App Store, that you need to make it flexible so when a new app is created, you can run that app on your device. So we always intended that to be like our device. Uh, another analogy I use is like a Curie coffee machine. Once you have the platform, if someone wants to release a different flavor of coffee in a different pod, you can do that relatively easily. That's a good good analogy. Um, your story reminds me, Paul, of uh, a statement that's been made by Sir Terence Matthews, one of uh, Ottawa's uh, most decorated, celebrated entrepreneurs. Uh, I've, I've seen him uh, speak many times. You, you likely have too. And he says, timing is everything, right? And and he was, I think, when he makes that comment, kind of um, hearkening back to the late 1990s in terms of telecom. And and he got it absolutely right with Newbridge. Um, and I couldn't think of a better example besides potentially Newbridge of a company being at the right place at the right time. Um, so as an entrepreneur, and, and certainly there probably are some other company owners, CEOs uh, watching this, Talk to me about the length of time that it actually took. Like people are probably sitting here going, look at this guy. He's on the front page of the newspapers and on the nightly news. And it, it just happened as a flash. But that's that's not the case, right? You've been at this for a long, long time. You're definitely right, Michael. So I have been at this not just the 14 years at Spartan, but before that, I was involved in other DNA testing companies, DNA diagnostic companies. So I would say I spent probably the last 25 years of my life, becoming a world expert in DNA diagnostics. Raised venture capital for my first company, joined another company that makes this spit cup that's used by 23 and Ancestry.com, and 14 years at Spartan. And it's all of that experience, all of that training that, as you said, culminated in right place, right time. But there's a reason why there's almost no one else in the world who can do this, because it's such a niche application. It just happens that this niche set of skills and expertise happens to be exactly what Canada needs right at this moment for every citizen. For for the entrepreneurs, once again, out there, uh, they could be thinking that, um, look at the success that Paul Lemon and uh, Spartan Biosense uh, is experiencing right now. But I bet you there were some tough days. You know, if you think back over that 15 year history, can you share um, a barrier that you needed to overcome or a challenge that you faced uh, over that period that was that was significant in nature? Uh, Definitely. I'd say the two biggest challenges are, so as a hardware company, so not only are we a hardware company, we're a medical device hardware company that's highly regulated. What that means is our product development cycles and regulatory approval cycles are measured in years. And no one ever gets it right the first time. We're now on our third generation device. So think of all those years you have to sustain a burn rate of a product that you have to keep iterating until it's the right thing for the market. To raise that amount of money is really difficult, especially because the, the usual suspects like venture capitalists, institutional investors, no one wants to take a bet on a highly risky device company where you're unsure if you'll get regulatory approval, you're unsure if you actually get the right application. What we had to do is we had to raise angel investment for 14 years. And some of the toughest times were, for example, the 2008, 2009 financial crisis when I literally had to go to our top shareholders and say, you know, we really need you to step up right now. Otherwise we are going to be out of business. Wow. Wow. And and you've had lots of prominent local people, including some of the great folks at Shopify step up uh, and support you. Um, We'll probably wrap up here in a minute, Paul, but um, I suspect again, that there are some entrepreneurs out there in Ottawa, potentially members of your fresh founders group that are really, discouraged, quite frankly, you know, their companies are not experiencing this explosive hockey, like uh, hockey stick, like growth that you are, what would you say to those people in terms of uh, an encouraging message or, uh, or, or a message to, to stick in there? Uh, share your thoughts on that. If you could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is always a 
difficult and interesting question as to do you keep persisting or is it time to cut your losses and try something new? The way we thought about it at Spartan is we had this thesis that one day everyone would want personal DNA analyzers. And we would kept, keep checking the market as to has any of our competitors actually released that yet? And year after year, no one has ever even come close. So that's why we decided to keep persisting because the market opportunity was still there. I just didn't realize that it would take the shape of COVID-19. But we did have confidence that there would be some application that would eventually come through. So my advice to entrepreneurs would be, you really have to think carefully. Is it worth persisting or is it worth trying something, something new? And I, I think the way I would think about it is, if everything works out right, is the market opportunity, is it still there or has someone already beat you to the punch? Mm, that's excellent. And I'm, we're, we're thrilled that no one did beat, beat you to the punch and that Spartan is, uh, as I said, thrust into this global spotlight. Congratulations, uh, Paul, uh, to you on your sense of perseverance, to your, your team's ability to execute on this, uh, this critically important challenge uh, you know, with the pandemic. So thanks very much for joining us today. Yeah, it's, it's my pleasure, Michael. And I think as you alluded to, we've had the support of so many people in Ottawa for 14 years. And without the support of the community, we would not be here today. Very well said. Uh, listen, uh, thanks again, Paul, for everyone watching this video. You can continue to visit obj.ca for continuing coverage of COVID-19. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please like the video and follow the channel. Thanks again, Paul. Thank you, Michael.